So are you thinking about cutting the cord but don't know how? Well on this video, we'll tell you how we got rid of cable TV, yet still got all of our shows and we're able to save $1,500 in the process. Coming up. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Brian Anthony with Relentless Reviews where we give you tips and tricks to save you time and money. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if at any moment you need details, please check the notes in the description of the video below. I'll put links to all the products and all the service that we're gonna talk about in this video. So let's jump into the video. So last year about this time, we were paying about $180 a month for cable TV. It was costing us quite a bit of money. We weren't really getting, we really were only getting the basic channels and also HBO, as well as, of course, we were paying for our cable internet service, but we really weren't getting that much use or at least didn't feel like getting, we were getting $180 worth of value. So we decided to cut the cord and in the process over the past year, we've saved about $1,500. So in this video, I'll tell you how we did it. It's incredibly easy. And uh, well, why don't we just jump right in? So in cutting the cord, we actually did get rid of our cable internet service as well as our TV service with our current provider. And we actually switched providers because the a, another provider in our area was giving a discount to sign up for a year. Actually, I think we we're getting a discount for two years. So in this case, we're actually only paying $30 a month for our cable internet service. And we don't have the fastest connection. We, we do get 40 megabytes a second, which by today's standards isn't, isn't the fastest you can get. It's one of the mo most affordable packages we could get, and it was plenty of bandwidth to support high definition streaming, which is all we were really trying to do as well as ensure that we had internet service at the house. So that's the first way in which we save. Okay, so now that we've gotten basic internet service out of the way, you're gonna need a couple of things. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to buy an HD antenna. So most of your televisions today don't come with an antenna anymore. Um, usually the, there actually still is a port, probably a, a coaxial cable port in which you can plug in an antenna, an aftermarket antenna, and they are very expensive. Um, so we'll show you a couple here. Um, we, actually, we actually purchased two different ones. Um, they're actually super easy to set up. All you gotta do is screw it into the coax cable on the back of your unit, and then you gotta find a place in the house in which to put it. So you're gonna need to look for probably the best place. Usually it's by a window so that you can get good digital reception. So there are different models. Some of them actually are powered and they have different ranges, anywhere from, I think it's anywhere from a 50 mile range up to 50. And usually it's when you get to the 50 mile range that they do need external power. And, and when I say external power, it really is usually just plugging into a USB port on the back of your television or the, the antenna manufacturer will provide an AC adapter. So really all you have to do is plug that in and then you have to set your TV to scan the channels and it'll find all the channels in your network. So to decide on what kind of antenna may be best for you in terms of its range, you might want to go and check out a couple of websites. You might check out tvfool.com or you can go to the FCC site where you can plug in your zip code and they'll give you an estimation as to how far away the television towers are from your home. And so this will give you a good approximation as to defining what range of antenna you'll need to get. Essentially, they're all very similar and some of the antennas actually do come with apps to help you better define where to best place it in your home. It'll tell you the signal strength. So we'll, we'll provide links in the description to a couple of, a couple of the antennas that we use. The ones that we have, we actually have two. You can see we purchased this one, this one last year, one by one by one. It offers 35 miles range. And you know, one of the things you're gonna wanna check is, you know, what's the range that you need, depending on where you are and where you are from the television towers. It doesn't require any power. You pretty much just plug it in via this coax cable on the back of your television and you're set to go. We haven't had any issues. It, you know, it's less than $20, so it's a pretty good deal. So we actually have two televisions. So we bought the 35 mile, uh, 35 mile range one originally. And uh, for another television that we have, that's sort of, uh, the signal isn't as good in that room. It's kind of buried. We bought this one, which is the Watch Free HD TV. It's a 50 mile range antenna. This one also actually comes with a stand, but really the, the difference here on, on this one is it also includes an app. So you can check the signal boost, it comes with a free app. You can use that app to check out your signal and see, see where the television towers are to help you give a, a better idea of where you should be placing the antenna to get the best reception in your house. So we just purchased this one a couple months ago. Um, and so, like I said, both of them are doing fine. Very similar design. Uh, this one comes with an app It's got and it does require power, but it's basically powered via the USB port on the back of our television. So with these HD antennas, they allow us to get NBC, CBS, and ABC. So next you're gonna need a streaming device. And for us, this is where we think all the magic happens, right? So it's where you consolidate all of your content, except for the television channels that you'll get through your HD antenna, 
but really this is where all the services come together and you can make for a great experience. And there are a couple different devices out there. Of course, when you talk about streaming devices, you can, you can try a number of different platforms. One, you can actually do it from your smart TV if you have a smart TV. If you have a gaming console, such as a PlayStation or an Xbox, definitely the newer ones, of course you have access to the internet. And there are also apps that are dedicated for those devices so that you can connect to Netflix or Hulu and the like. Of course, and then finally, there's dedicated streaming devices such as you know the Amazon Fire, St Fire TV stick or the Amazon Fire TV or the Roku. So we actually do have a smart television. We have a couple of smart TVs. However, the experience isn't as good. So we decided to go with the dedicated device. The dedicated device, one, not only consolidates a lot of different types of content, but as well, it actually has a faster chip. So the whole experience runs a lot faster. It's been optimized. So in terms of the device that we actually use, we actually have a Fire TV stick and a Fire TV. We actually have both. And we decided to go with the Amazon product because one, we were Prime subscribers. So it's very easy to integrate your Amazon Prime Video. And we had a couple of movies that we had purchased through Amazon Video in the past. And we wanted to make sure to have easy access to that content. Um, but the Fire Stick is great. It is only $40, you know, so it's, it's a great device. It does up to 1080. And through the Fire Stick, we can actually log in through Hulu and Netflix and, and, and HBO. So, and rather than going to different apps, we, we pretty much watch television through the Fire Stick and run all the apps through the Fire Stick's native apps. To our device, again, it's only $40. Um, of course, there are other options. Amazon is actually releasing a brand new Fire TV this week. I think it begins, well, they announced it a couple of weeks ago. It starts shipping on the 25th. And the new Fire TV is actually a bit of like a, it looks like it's a small dongle that hangs off your television. It's no longer sort of like the Apple TV size, but a small dongle that hangs off. So we did notice if you want to get an HD antenna, as well as a streaming device, you can actually get Fire TV plus an antenna as a package for $75 or it's $74.99 as opposed to if you just got the Fire TV as a standalone, that's only $69.99. So that's something to consider. We'll put the link in the description. Going back to it, again, the Fire TV and the Fire TV stick are incredibly easy to set up. You just need to plug it into the wall and it's got an HDMI plug to plug into your television. And as soon as you get it going, it'll already be connected to your, your Amazon account. And particularly if you're a Prime member, you'll instantly have access to all your Prime videos. So another popular streaming device is actually the Roku. And the Roku is actually very similar to the Fire TV or Fire TV stick. And they have various models as well. Some that support 4K, some that are only standard or 1080 HD. And those, and they are varying ranges of prices. Those are also easily available on Amazon and they support all the different programs. So I would take a look at those two options as your, as your primary devices. I'm, that's it for streaming devices. And finally, you just need to decide what you wanna watch. And here's the opportunity where you can decide which services you wanna to subscribe to, um, which you need, which you don't. And really this is where it's gonna change the difference in your cost at this point. So we subscribe to Netflix. That costs us about $12 a month. I don't know if you've heard Netflix just a couple of weeks ago, earlier this month in October, they did raise their prices. So the top plan is now $14 instead of 12. But we'll let, go ahead and take a, you can take a look at that on Netflix to decide which service you want. Hulu costs $8 a month. We actually did notice that Hulu is running a deal for new customers or new subscribers, and they're only charging $5.99 for the first year. You do get a, I, I believe you get a 30 day free trial, but it might only be seven days. So again, you'll wanna check that on, on the Hulu site. And, and Hulu does have access to all the different television shows. Usually they will be they will be aired a day after the actual air date on live television. Hulu is actually just started a new program, but it actually looks a little bit expensive. You can get live TV instead of having to wait a day, but that program's $39.99. So we haven't tried that yet, but it is another option. However, I think it, that kind of defeats the purpose in terms of trying to save money that you're gonna be paying $40 a month for Hulu um, when you already have so much access to so many different services at such an affordable rate. There also is HBO. So we subscribe to HBO. We get that through our Fire TV through Amazon channels and we pay $14.99 a month. You can also do that through the other services if you decided to go through Roku or go directly through HBO. And you can sign up and it costs you $14.99 a month. So you can go month to month. So that's one of the great things now that without actually having to have a full cable subscription like you did in the past, you actually do have access to a number of different networks if you wanted to get Showtime or Stars or Cinemax plus hundreds of other different channels, you could actually go ahead and become a subscriber. And those actually range in different price. 
So they aren't necessarily, HBO is probably the most expensive at $14.99, but I do know some of those other major networks um, only charge about $4.99 or even perhaps even less. And so one of the other services that we actually do subscribe to from time to time is actually Sling TV. Now Sling TV can also be accessed through your media device. Um, you can access it online, but you can also access it through the Fire TV. There's an app for it or as well through the Roku and Sling TV and their base package, it runs about $20 a month. And the reason why we use Sling TV from time to time is actually to get access to ESPN. So with the general Sling package, the, the basic Sling package, I think it's called the orange package, we get access to ESPN, TBS, TNT, other things like History Channel and, and Disney. But the reason why we subscribe to it for a couple months out of the year is actually just to get live sports. So particularly right now it's football season and you know, basketball season will be coming up or basketball season is also just starting. So, you know, I'm about to get, I'm about to sign back up for it, especially as I turn off HBO and no longer pay now that Game of Thrones is over until the next season starts. So, and you can decide what you want. Pretty much all these different services or all the extra add-on services can be subscribed to through any of the major streaming players. Of course, if you wanted to go with someone like Chromecast for, on, the, on the Google device, or also Apple's Apple TV. They also have similar similar services. But again, we decided to go with Fire TV because we're Prime members and we have access to a number of different benefits that are just so easy to use to the Fire TV stick. So cutting the cord for us has been great. We haven't looked back. We haven't once again thought about ever signing back up for cable TV. I hope I've given you enough information to help you make an informed decision about what you'd like to do for your entertainment. And if you would like any more information on the products and services I just discussed, I'll put the links to those in the description below. Thanks for tuning in and please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.